Hi there, I'm Sybil Dan. I mean, I'm Mike Malloy, writer director of a documentary entitled Eurocrime, the Italian Cop and Gangster Films that Ruled the 70s. You caught me just about to make a motorcycle vigilante sweep of my neighborhood, perhaps inspired by watching Raro's great transfer of the 1977 Eurocrime movie Stunt Squad. The film's original Italian title is La Polizia Esconfita, which translates to The Police Are Defeated. In American cinema, the action staple of the car chase had been irrevocably popularized in a 1968 Steve McQueen movie called Bullet, and a mere three years into America's fascination with the car chase, it had already produced a film that was just basically one big wall-to-wall -wall vehicular pursuit, and that was 1971's Vanishing Point. The Eurocrime boom really got rolling a couple of years later in 1973 with hit films like High Crime and The Violent Professionals, and it quickly established car chases as one of its specialties. So how long before the Eurocrime genre had built upon the car chase, expanded it out, basically created its own movie that was just like non-stop, pure, unadulterated stunt driving? And did it ever create such a movie? Keep in mind the Eurocrime movies had to be made so quickly and so cheaply. Well, in 1977, two films appeared, Highway Racer and Stunt Squad, that both sort of promised this action stunt fest just based on their titles and their log lines. Let's look at the premise of Stunt Squad. In the story, the police create a special unit of daredevil motorbike riders to fight crime. Sounds pretty over the top, right? And yes, there are plenty of crazy action moments, like a slow-mo car roll that probably captures shattering auto glass better than anywhere else in the body of cinema. There's, you know, burning cars, doing flips, and what is probably the most outrageous moment in the movie, a training montage where a motorbike cop rides past some paper targets, blasting holes into all of them, all while popping a wheelie at high speeds. But despite the title and despite occasional moments of genuine stunt craziness, Stunt Squad has a lot of thematic heaviness and plenty of attempts at being realistic and relevant. Before the Stunt Squad is turned loose, which doesn't even happen until 45 minutes into the movie, by the way, the cops all gather at the police precinct and they watch this somber slideshow that recaps all the muggings and the kidnappings and the bombings that rocked Italy in reality during the 1970s. And it's a scene full of statistics and political theory and apparently that the photos that were used for the slides, while well, they were, you know, depicting real crime scenes and real victims. And then at the end of the movie, uh, let's just say that if you're an uh, Italian citizen during the 70s watching that ending, you probably had a cathartic experience. Uh, it's not the typical dispensing of justice in a cop film, and the high-flying stunt squad is nowhere to be found at the end. It's at times like these that the stunt squad title does a disservice to the movie. And uh, in the booklet accompanying this release, I go in further into some of the factors keeping this film schizophrenically operating on two dual fronts. The film stars French actor Marcel Bozoufi, who had a prosperous Eurocrime career in the 70s, probably because he starred as a villain in the influential Hollywood film The French Connection. If you can't tell by now, the Eurocrime movies really look to The French Connection for inspiration. Bozoufi never became a name actor in America back then, and unlike Maurizio Merli, he hasn't really developed a cult following here now either, and that's despite the fact that some of the earliest Eurocrime DVDs to be released here in America were Contraband, where he was the villain, or Colt 38 Special Squad, where he was the lead. Bozoufi didn't really have the colorful characters of a Maurizio Merli, never had a bushy mustache, but he had an equal intensity in his performance. In Stunt Squad, he says something like, uh, you know, justice means everything to me. There's no time for anything else. Now, the earlier film, Colt 38 Special Squad, raises an interesting point, as it's a very similar movie to Stunt Squad. The two films have about five cast members in common. Both are scored by Stelvio Cipriani, and both feature a story about the creation of a special police motorbike squad, which are both led by Marcel Bosoufi. So the point this raises is about the internal copycatting of the Eurocrime genre. A lot of fuss has been made about the Eurocrime movies taking their cues from American cop and gangster films, but that's not really where the mimicry stopped. And it's fascinating watching the Eurocrime genre cannibalize itself for ideas, and I don't even mean that in a pejorative way. A copy of a copy of a copy of a Eurocrime movie isn't an increasingly fuzzy Xerox. They're all able to be appreciated in their own light. 
Take, for instance, the Hollywood film The French Connection. Its Euro crime counterpart, High Crime, could already be considered kind of a copy. Uh, when High Crime was a hit, the producer wanted a sequel, but star Franco Nero wouldn't come back for that, so instead they made a movie, Violent Rome, starring a guy named Maurizio Merli, who was groomed to look just like Franco Nero. So sort of a copy of a copy. I talked to Eurocrime star Leonard Mann once, and he told me he was supposed to star with Merli in a Eurocrime film called Weapons of Death. But Mann didn't want to star opposite Merli. So who ended up being his co-star in that film? A Maurizio Merli look-alike, Jeff Blinn. So a copy of a copy of a copy, in a sense. But all four of the films mentioned here, I mean, they're all considered classics. The Eurocrime genre just seems to work that way. And keep in mind that the bad ones, the bad movies, they don't end up in this chain of mimicry. So even if it has connections to other films, you're going to enjoy Stunt Squad. And also... It appears the criminals have come to me. Excuse me. You get the hell out of my house!